Good morning, Inspiring Illuminators. It is me, Jennifer Engel, your subconscious coach. And yesterday, or this morning, <laughs> uh, what seems to be happening is I'll make a recording and I'll do the video the next morning. Um, yesterday, aka this morning, <laughs> I did a little jaunt with Jen on this thought or this idea of becoming an upgraded human. And I talked about some of the more semi-metaphysical things, but how it was also lined up with science. This uh, in regard to aligning our heart, our mind, and our gut instincts and how each one of those areas have their own neurons and memories. That's the science part of it. And then the metaphysical part of it is when you do that, you start to develop uh, six sense abilities. The ability to kind of send out a signal semi-telepathically, the ability to start self-healing, things like that. Today, um, I wrote a poem and I'm doing a mini series on how we can expand our own light and consciousness. And another way that we can kind of gain control, if you will, is to pay attention to our feelings. Our feelings are talking to us, whether they are negative or positive. So in the poem, you know, and, and also how you climb Jacob's ladder, how you start um, aligning your chakras, how you climb the rainbow bridge or cross over, is by moving from fear to courage, from guilt to acceptance, from low self-esteem to self-confidence, from anger and jealousy and anxiety, to compassion, from lies to truth, and from misperception to clear perception. And each one of those feelings has something to tell us. Fear, Obviously, something's not safe. But so many people get enslaved by fear. And so my thing is, keep moving forward, even though you're afraid, but do so with caution and with smarts. That's where our logical mind can help us, okay? But don't get trapped by fear. That's how you gain courage. You are afraid, but you move forward anyway. With caution, not with stupidity. Okay, <laughs> there's a difference. Um, then we also have to move from guilt to acceptance. Sometimes that's our responsibility to do. Or if there is something that you are doing that um, you know, really should cause guilt, it is our responsibility to change that. If you are doing something that you feel guilty for, but it's not hurting you, and it's not hurting other people, but other people make you feel guilty, then it's your responsibility to let their feelings go a little bit and not worry about it. That's their responsibility um, to deal with. Um, you can't control other people, you can only control yourself. And so you can try to open their mind. Some people are open to a little push on the door and other people are a brick wall. You know, don't talk to a brick wall. <laughs> Just let her go. We have to move from low self-confidence to confidence, which is um, 
showing our talents to the world and sharing them and getting positive feedback for that. And at the same time, I like to say, uh, try to strengthen your weak muscles as well. I always tell my students, you know, I teach uh, students who struggle with reading. I said, you know, some of you great are, are, are great in art and math and whatever. Me, if you apply it to like going to the gym, I love legs day because my legs are very powerful. I hate arms day. But what should I be working on the most? Not my legs, they're already strong. You know what I'm saying? So, to move from low self-confidence to higher self-confidence, you do practice and put out your strength that, and it should help other people. Um, when it helps other people, you get a more positive feedback loop, right? If it only helps yourself, you may or may not get <laughs> um, a positive feedback loop. And then behind closed doors, where you don't have to feel weird or awkward, <laughs> you're working on the weak areas. Um, and then you have to move from anger, jealousy, anxiety. Anger is a boundary's been broken. Jealousy is, I wish somebody Oh, I wish I had what somebody else has. The way that I have script flipped that for myself is when I feel anger, I go, whoa, what are you teaching me? <laughs> Why do I feel this way? When it came to jealousy, I heard a really aw um, awesome way to think about that. Um, a couple years ago. So one way to look at that is if I believe I manifest in my life that which I want, then more beautiful things are going to be popping up in my reality. And rather than feeling jealous that I don't have those things, I flip the script and I say, sweet. I'm gonna be looking youthful. I'm gonna be looking beautiful and cute, sweet. I'm gonna have some of these things coming up in my life soon. I also took on the mindset of Dr. Martin Luther King. You know, I do have a lot of like subconscious insight but I think if any teacher tells you they know everything, run. <laughs> They're a liar. <laughs> um, I don't have all the answers. But uh, one of the things that I liked to, uh, quotes that I like is by Dr. Martin Luther King. I don't know if I'm gonna get there with you in this life, you know, but I will get there with you. I'll get to the mountaintop. And so, if I see beautiful things, um, I just hold in my imagination that they may pop up in this lifetime or the next. But I give thanks for the beautiful things that are showing up in my life, rather than feeling jealous about them. So, flip the script. And I feel appreciative of what other people have. Okay, because again, I do believe that the world is kind of like an echo chamber. You speak, you think, it hits what you think or speak about, and it comes back to you. So if you're saying things like, well, I don't have this or whatever, that's what's coming back to you. But if you say, oh, I'm so happy for these people, I'm so happy that that might even pop up in my life. Boom, it comes back to you. That's what I believe. 
again, <laughs> I only share my beliefs just to not die with my music inside of me and to provide entertainment, <laughs> amusement, and or possibly open somebody's worldview. <laughs> okay. Lies, misperception. So lies tell us to hide. Um, we know, we tell lies because we know what we're doing is wrong. Or sometimes people make the justification, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, I actually understand. People might tell lies because, like they say in A Few Good Men, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> so sometimes we lie or hide the truth because either A, we are not ready to face it, and if that's the case, go back to step one, fear. Move forward anyway, even if you are afraid but do so uh, help with the help of your logic, okay? Um, if it's the other way, then it's a lot like um, compassion or whatever. You can push on the door to see if someone's ready for truth or not. But um, I try to practice how I feel God or spirit is. And God or spirit doesn't give us something until we're ready to really handle it. Um, and so sometimes I push on the door or I'll listen to others to see if people are ready. And if they are, then I'll tell them. Or if I feel like it is a good, safe place and space, I've put enough marbles in the jar or <laughs> coins in the piggy bank to build up a piggy bank of trust it's a safe brave space I'll tell people truth and if it's not then it's not necessarily like I'm lying to them I'm just not revealing it until they may be ready and some people maybe never will be <coughs> um, okay misperception Misperception and projection go together hand in hand. Uh, so in our mind, we see, and who knows, maybe we all misperceive, maybe we all distort. But what tone <laughs> and um, colors and hues the distortion takes is based on your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. So, you know, you can kind of think about that like filters on your camera, on your phone. If you are low and dark, then the filter is going to be black and white, monochrome, not very colorful, not very interesting. If you are up and high, it's going to be more colorful, more vivid, more dreamlike. Um, <laughs> and your filters can shift and change and alter depending upon who you are with. Because as I have said in the past, we have electromagnetic fields. And you really are only 100% aware of what your natural, you know, dominant electromagnetic field is when you're away from people. Because when you come within six feet or so of others, your electromagnetic fields blend. So then you start taking on other thoughts and feelings and things of the people around you. So that is a teaching, 
you are an average of the people you spend the most time with. So look at people in your life and say, is this where I want to be now and in the future? And if not, you need to seriously consider <laughs> changing who you spend time with. All right. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about is really taking control of our emotions and actually being awake, aware, and creating our emotions rather than them creating thoughts, feelings, and images and controlling us, okay? So I'm gonna give you, um, it's the same advice that I give for pretty much everything. A lot of times I'll say a lot of the same things, but it's good because the more you hear it, the more it gets ingrained in your psyche. And that's how people learn, through repetition. So here is one tip though that I haven't given yet. And this tip is the first thing you put into your body, into your mind, will set the tone and the craving for the rest of the day. Let me repeat that one more time. If you have a pen and paper, you might want to write this down or jot a note on your phone. The first thing that you put into your body or mind is the thing that you'll crave the rest of the day. All right. So let's deal with the four pieces of the pie. Physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, vibrationally, or subconsciously. So I started noticing this with food. When the very first thing that I put into my body is like clean eating or whatever, that's what I crave the rest of the day. If the first thing I put into my body is more like high fat, high carbs, whatever, that's what I crave the rest of the day. In addition, all of those things are consciousness. They may not have physical bodies, but they actually live vicariously through you, okay? When you start understanding the power of water, the power of pot or alcohol or lettuce or basil, fill in the blank, okay? Smoke, nicotine, those are all consciousnesses and you have to deal with them as if they were people. So you have to, when you ingest these things, say, is these things serving my highest good? Physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, vibrationally. Or is it kind of being more par parasitic and using my physical body, my mind, my emotions for its own benefit, okay? <laughs> because it's really interesting. I had a urine infection and I can tell you every single time I have one, why? Number one, I start to not get thirsty. Number two, I start craving high fat, high carbs, okay? And then 
my tummy might start bloating or whatever. Now I say this because it was really interesting. I just learned that we're only 42% human and the rest of us is like bacteria and fungus and yeast and who knows what. So they control us way more than we think. Um, and so when my doctor asked me, well, how do you know you have a urinary infection? I gave her the symptoms. The doctor repeated back to me, well, that's interesting. That's what that bacteria likes in order to thrive. And so uh, we really have to be aware of the things we put into our body. Is it beneficial for both parties involved? Is it symbiotic or parasitic? Okay. And I found that the first thing I put into my body is the thing that I'll crave for the rest of the day. So it can go uh, with food, liquids, uh, other chemicals, I guess. Mentally, it is the thoughts and the way that I control my thoughts and emotions. Uh, first, I'll talk about spiritual vibrational in a minute. So you can do it however you want. <laughs> um, I generally start high and go low. And what do I mean by that? Well, the first thing I do um, when I wake up in the morning is I do actually have a cup of coffee. It kind of gets the brain going. And to be honest, I'm not saying what I just said, which is funny, it'll sound hypocritical, is always true. <laughs> I think for me, it's more like the first meal I have throughout the day. But anyway, um, I start off reflective. So that's that um, spiritual vibrational subconscious work, okay? So I'll start off reflecting on the day before, on how I'm feeling now. If I need to do any script flipping, like I almost pretend there's a machine scanning my body. Do I feel any anger? Do I feel any uh, guilt? Do I feel any low self-esteem, doubt, anger? Am I hiding anything? Why? So that's like the first thing that I do. So I start off spiritually, vibrationally, uh, subconscious cleaning. So I call it, <laughs> you know, we brush our teeth every day, hopefully. We take a shower every day. Why would we not clean up our subconscious that actually controls <laughs> like 98% of your automatic pilot. That's way more than your teeth or your hair or your skin. Okay. So I do that. And then I move into feeling. I tune myself up using music. And the first music that I will use is meditation music. And um, I will find they have on YouTube the specific Hertz, not H-U-R-T-S, <laughs> electronic Hertz for the feeling, the emotion that I want to focus on or create that day. So, <coughs> um, you literally can tune yourself up. And if you don't want to sit in a quiet, dark room like I do, because that will get you down into deeper parts of your subconscious. But again, I do tell people like, <laughs> if you're doing it for the first time, don't be surprised if the very first thing that pops up is the demons, the fear, the guilt, the insecurity, 
any past negative experiences or trauma you've had. That's the first layer of the onion that you need to peel <laughs> before you get to the nice, gooey, sweet center. It's one thing I was, I had a cinnamon roll, which I normally don't eat sweets in the morning, but it was Christmas morning. I'm like, yeah, if anyone can figure out <laughs> how to make just centers of cinnamon rolls and actually have them turn out that way, without having to eat the hard crusty parts, <laughs> they'd be a genius. And that's really what meditation's like. The first thing that pops up when you go dark and quiet and silent is the hard crusty parts. <laughs> and it takes time and dedication and practice to take that wall down, to remodel it, just like it does a house or a room. So that was something I put in my poetry this week. You get out what you put in. Okay? <laughs> so, I start with reflection. I move into meditation, which is just tuning yourself up. And then I move my tune, my playlist from meditation to celebration. So when I am actually showering, um, all my playlists are positive. They're songs I love. Songs that remind me of what I want in my life. Joy, love. One of my songs is Paperback Writer by the Beatles because I want to be a writer, right? So I put a uh, great playlist and I celebrate life while I shower. You know, I think my kids find it annoying that I sing so loudly in the bathroom and whatever, but, you know, someday when I'm gone, they'll miss it. We're like birds in the morning who sing to the rising sun. Now, not everybody has to do that, but here's what I found. When people are in lower states, they're quiet. When they're in excited states, they can't stop talking. And when they are balanced, calm, content, and I think it's one of the best states, singing and humming will often be heard. Okay? <laughs> That's when you know someone is really probably the most aligned with the universe in that moment when they're singing, when they're humming, when they're creating. And they might actually be like, you know, really surfing on the high waves if they're excitedly talking and sharing. That's good too. Okay. So I start off spiritually, vibrationally, subconscious clearing. I move into meditation, celebration, to a uh, tuning up and celebrating. And then I get down into life, which brings me back to, <laughs> see in Western societies, stories are told, this is what I'm gonna tell you. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what I've said. And I do a little bit of that. <laughs> But spiritual stories, you know, um, they go in circles. <laughs> so now we're back at the physical. So in order to gain control of our emotions and our thoughts, you can either go from top down or from down up. The first thing you can do is you can be aware of what you put into your body. And you can ask yourself, is what I'm doing symbiotic or parasitic? And just start making notes. You know, I love beer. And I've just really come to the conclusion that I shouldn't have it anymore. Because on one hand, 
It has almost like natural probiotics that make my stomach feel better. But at the cost of the yeast in it, wanting to live even more and thrive even more in my body. And when I look at other people, they get the beer belly. And what I heard one time, I don't know if it's true or not, is that a lot of times fat is, um, it's like yeast and mold and fungus. And if you don't give your body that environment for it to live in, it can't exist. <laughs> and I can always tell when, when it's gotten out of control. So I'll stop getting thirsty. I'll crave high fat, high carbs, and then I'll get a urine infection. So even though I love beer, I've determined that more often than not, it is parasitic for me. So I need to give it up. Or if I have any, just a tiny, tiny bit. But for me, beer is almost like <laughs> chocolates or sweets for somebody else. Not that I was ever alcoholic or anything like that, but I can't just have one little sip. I gotta have like two or three glasses, <laughs> right? So that's what I mean. Just be aware of the things that you put in your body, okay? Listen to your doctors. For a long time, I didn't listen to my doctor that my thyroid was off. For 10 years, I didn't take thyroid medicine. For 10 years, I didn't make very good decisions. <laughs> And then all of a sudden I took thyroid medicine, it was like my mind cleared up and I started, not always, um, making a little bit better decisions. <laughs> so, work with your doctors, but at the same time, work with your doctors. There's been medicines that have been very parasitic and harmful to me. So again, you have to be awake and aware. Um, in your mind, we've talked about that, and in your soul and spirit, what you can do. So the biggest takeaway I think I would want anyone to really come away with on today's job with Jen is the first thing you put into your body, you put into your mind, you put into your emotions, is what you're going to start craving and wanting more of throughout your days. So if you have a habit that you want to change, the best thing you can do is change the first thing that you do every morning. And I've also talked about, and Lady Gaga does this too, by the way, your top three to five things in the morning is really going to set the tone for the rest of the day. Really work on your top three to five things in the morning. And do them pretty much without fail. Because when you are in those low lows, even though it sucks <laughs> and you don't feel like doing it, if you can at least even just do the first thing, on your list, you'll feel better than if you didn't do anything. And like Lady Gaga says, and like I've experienced, if you keep going on and you get the second thing or the third thing done, by the time you hit the fourth and the fifth, you might be in a whole different state of mind and you'll actually feel better. I hope this talk has helped someone today so that you can use your own tips, tricks, strengths, and strategies <laughs> to first help yourself and then help those around you. Because now more than ever, the world needs that and it needs you. Peace and blessings.